Welcome to this video lesson. The focus of this video is horizontal and vertical lines. All right, when it comes to horizontal and vertical lines, I always like to start my students off with this little activity. So plotting the points on this Cartesian plane and then drawing a straight line through it. And we're going to start looking for a few patterns. So if you folks want to, you can just pause the video and try this activity out first, and then we will take it up. All right, here is the actual points plotted and a line that goes through them. So I've labeled all the points so you can actually see the points and kind of check your answers if you tried them. And here are the lines. And obviously you can see that the first two lines are vertical lines and the next two are actually horizontal lines. Let's look for a few patterns. One thing you notice is that on this line over here, all the x coordinates of my points are always 5. And that makes sense because on a vertical line, the x values are always constant. They never change. And we can see that our y coordinates are actually changing. So one thing we notice obviously here is that the x values are always 5. So to write the equation of this line, since the x coordinate is always 5, the equation is simply x is equal to 5. Uh, for the slope of this line, we can see that it's completely vertical. So we, as we remember, if, if the line is horizontal, then the slope there is 0. If the slope is being more and more slanted, so as the steepness increases, the slope actually increases. When we have a completely vertical line, we call that slope undefined. So slope here is undefined. Note that a common mistake is when students say that this has no slope or if, it, if they say that the slope is 1 or if slope is 0. When it's vertical, that means it's infinitely big of a slope and therefore we call that slope actually undefined. If we were to find the slope mathematically for this one, m will equal to the change in y over change in x. So the change in y, if we take two points, let's take this point over here and let's take this one over here. The change in y is 0 minus 4 and the change in x is 5 minus 5. That will give us negative 4 over 0 and anything over 0 is actually undefined, so we can just call it undefined. Finally, the last few things that we recognize, one is that the x-intercept is always has the same value as our, the value of the constant in our equation. So here, x-intercept is at 5, 0. And we can also see that this vertical line over here is parallel to our y-axis and is perpendicular to our x-axis. Okay, for our second one, second line over here, it's the same idea. You can see that the x coordinate of our points is always negative 1. So you can guess what the equation over here, so you can write that here. And we know that the slope is similar, so the slope here is also undefined. So I will just put that over here. Equation for this one, x always takes the value of negative 1. So we will label that. And x-intercept, in this case, happens to be at negative 1 and 0. For our next 
two graphs, we can see that in both cases we have a horizontal line. If we start looking for patterns, we can see that the x coordinate of our points is always changing. However, the y value is not. It's 3 here, 3 here, 3 here, 3 here. So we can use the same idea as we did last time to come up with our equation. And our equation, in this case, x is always changing. However, y is always staying the same. So y here is equal to a value of 3. In terms of our slope, we can see that there is zero steepness, so m value or slope is equal to zero for both cases here. And if we were to find the slope mathematically, m is equal to delta y over delta x, we can take two points. I will take this point and this point over here. Delta y is 3 minus 3 and change in y is change in x is 4 minus 0 so we get 0 over 4 and any number sorry 0 over any number is equal to 0 and therefore our slope is 0 we also notice that our y intercept we can use this idea that y is always 3 so whenever x coordinate is 0, y should also take a value of 3. So 0, 3 would be our y-intercept here. For our next graph over here, you can kind of guess what the equation is, uh, what this, well, we already have the slope, and what the y-intercept is. I will just write it down that our equation is y is equal to negative 4, it's, the y value is always negative 4 for all the points, and our slope, it's a horizontal line, so no steepness, so steepness of 0. To summarize everything we did on the activity, here are some of the properties of vertical lines. So here are few examples of vertical lines we can notice that the x coordinates for them are always the same we can notice that they're always parallel to the y-axis we can notice that they are always perpendicular to our x-axis their equation is always in the form of x is equal to some real number so in this case x is equal to negative 6 3 x is equal to 8, and it could also be x is equal to negative 6.2 or negative 6.47 or x is equal to pi. So it could be any real numbers. It doesn't actually have to be integers. We can also notice that their gradient is always undefined. One really big common mistake is that students often associate the word vertical with equation y is equal to something. So you have to actually think about it twice and realize that in, on a vertical line, the x values are always the same, but the y values are actually changing. So you can't, if you wrote y is equal to negative 6, for example, that means the y value is always negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it would actually be a horizontal line and not vertical. So be very careful with with the fact that you should not associate x is equal to the x-axis or a horizontal line. Some of the properties of horizontal lines is that the y-coordinate is always constant or the same. So, for example, in this one, y is the here at this point over here, for example, x is 0 and y is 7. Here x is equal to 1 and y is 7. So the y coordinate is always the same. y is always 0 here. y is always negative 7 over here. These lines, horizontal lines, are always parallel to the x-axis and they are perpendicular to the y-axis. The equation is always in the form y is equal to something and again this is where students often make a mistake because they think that since y is equal to something it should be a vertical line because it's same as the y-axis but it isn't. 
it's just saying that the y values are always the same, meaning it's actually a horizontal line. We also notice that the gradient or the steepness really is zero all the time with horizontal lines, so gradient or slope is always zero. All right, let's do an example here. We are asked to draw the following. The first one is x is equal to 3. Second one is x is equal to negative 0.5. And lastly, y is equal to negative 10. So for this particular example, when x is equal to 3, that means, first of all, x value is always 3. So what I often do is I just start with the x-intercept of 3, 0. And I know that the x value never changes, so I just draw a vertical line indicating that x is always 3, and I just label the line. For x is equal to negative 0.5, again, I will start with the x-intercept, and that x value is never changing, so I can just draw a vertical line as best as I can to represent x is equal to negative 0 0.5. Finally, for y is equal to negative 10, I will start with my y-intercept, which is negative 10. So that's somewhere right here. And then I will just, I know that the y value never changes and it always stays at negative 10, so I just draw a uh, horizontal line, and I will label it as y is equal to negative 10. So our first example, it was a drawing question, and it gave us the grid, so we didn't really have to label any points. However, for our second question, it asks us to sketch the graph, meaning I we don't really have a grid to work with, so we have to create our own. So we kind of start with that. So we can kind of create a x and y coordinates. Just going to label this one as well. I forgot to label our x and y. And we are going to sketch the graph of y is equal to 4 and x is equal to negative 2, and then determine where they intersect. So we're also determining the point of intersection. So when y is equal to 4, I can kind of approximately go, that, and let's say this is 4. And I know that the y value never changes, so I will just draw a horizontal line which is parallel to the x-axis, I will call that y is equal to 4 and label at least one point over here. And the one to label, one really good one to label often is just the y-intercept, so in this case 0, 4. And we know that all these points over here will have a y-coordinate of 4 but different x-values. The second one that we have to draw is x is equal to negative 2. And to do that, we start kind of with our x-intercept, approximately negative 2, so somewhere over here. I'll just label it as well. This is negative 2, 0. And we know that the x value is never changing, so we have a vertical line. So I'm going to draw that. And we are going to label this line as x is equal to negative 2. Once we have this, we have answered the first part of the question. The second part is asking us to determine the point of intersection. We can see that it intersects over here. We just don't know what point that is. But we do have enough information to find this out. We know that this x value for this line over here, or the x-coordinate of all the points on this line are always negative 2, meaning that at this point, the x-coordinate must be negative 2. So I will label that using, let's do purple, 
So we know that the x coordinate is always negative 2. And we know that for our horizontal line, the y coordinate never changes. So the y value is always 4. So y is 4 here, y is 4 here, y is 4 here. So y must be 4 right at this point as well. So I can label the y coordinate as 4. So that means that, and I'm going to just write a concluding sentence here, that point of intersection is at negative 2 and 4. Kind of some of the key points that you need to include in a sketch. In drawing, it's a little bit easier. In drawing, you just have to kind of label your equation, have proper line and arrows uh, for all of the lines. So you would have to do that for here and this one. For sketching is slightly different. You now have to label your equation. So you need to have your equation. You need at least one point and you need to have proper line. So line and arrows. You need to have equation and at least one point. And you need that for both of the lines. So I'm going to put check mark, check mark, and check mark. And the second part of the question is asking us to determine the point of intersection. So we don't have to show too much work for this one because it's by showing this point over here, we know that the y coordinate corresponds to the green line and this one corresponds to the uh, vertical line. So all we need to do is kind of label it over here and just write a concluding sentence that the point of intersection happens at this point. You can also write here or, or POI is at, you can just include it over here. Just make sure you box your answer so that way whoever is looking at your work can actually determine that you got it right.